Hey everybody, it's Ross and I'm doing some deep diving into John. John, what a wonderful book, obviously. It's not part of the Synoptic Gospels, but it does have similarities in them. A synoptic Gospel, the Matthew, Mark, Luke is kind of what you say in order, but not necessarily everything in order. Uh, it covers different time spans than the others. It locates much of Jesus' ministry in Judea. So there's a little difference between John and you can say it's more theological because it starts out in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God. So that's pretty heavy theology, right? Uh, it portrays Jesus discordant length of his theological matters. That's basically it. So there is some differences in the synoptics versus John. And I ran down, I'm doing a deep dive on it. And I came across, I'm in the, uh, the 16th chapter, and he says, For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me, and I have believed that I came forth from the Father. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. The disciples said, Lo, now you're speaking plainly and are not using a figure of speech. That's their way of saying you're not talking in parables now because he talked lots of parables in John. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for any to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. So their belief either got stronger or some of them were not saved, totally saved at the time. They were being saved because that verse 30 says, we know now, is that the time of their salvation? We don't know exactly. People get saved and it looks different for different people. But it appears that we know now all things and have no need to, for anyone to question you. You, by this, we believe that you come from God. They have now believed in this passage that Jesus came from the Father and he is the true Messiah, the Savior of the world. And look what Jesus answered them. Do you now believe, question mark? He asks a lot of questions, doesn't he, Jesus? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Now it's time to go. It's time to go. Preach the gospel. Use your voice. Preach. The Bible's not written yet. Uh, it's being written, but it's time to, by divine revelation and Old Testament, that they could pre preach Christ and Him crucified. So he says, it's time to leave. Cut, cut the strings. And he says, you'll be scattered, each of his own home, and leave me alone. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to be around me anymore. And leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because I'm with the Father. This was an interesting thing on the way out of this passage. 33 is the last verse. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. How, how does one have peace? Well, you can have worldly peace for sure. Things make people peaceful. But true peace only comes from the Prince of Peace. Now, don't you know, Tell people and use it as a draw card. Oh, you don't have peace in your Bible except Jesus. That's not why we use that. Oh, you got lack of peace? Well, come to, come to know Jesus. No, Jesus died for them sin, sins. You have to talk about why Jesus came before you go to the gospel. And if you see any contrition there in that person, uh, you can give them the gospel. If you're not seeing any contrition, they're not being convicted by Holy Spirit. So they're not ready. So what I see on TV, you like peace, come to Jesus. You, and they leave out why Jesus came. Always make why Jesus came make sense. Talk about sin, righteousness, and judgment. And like I said, if you see contrition in a person as you're witnessing to them, uh, give them the gospel. If it doesn't worry them, then don't throw pearls before swine. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you have peace. That's good for us to know. That we can have peace through Christ. He is the Prince of Peace as a Christian. But it's not the original reason we came to Jesus, right? 
We came to Jesus through repentance and conviction of sin and put our faith in Christ as Savior and Lord. God come to earth. And he goes on to say, in the world, you will have tribulation. Some of us are having really bad tribulations in our life. Different problems, different people. It could be anything. You'll have tribulations. You're going to be uh, made fun of. You're going to have physical problems. You're going to have all kinds of problems. And he says, there's no doubt, when you, when you come across trials and tribulations, the world you have, you will have tribulations. So don't worry when you have tribulations. I, you have the peace. It passes all understanding. Let the peace of God rest upon you when you have tribulations of this world. In the world you have tribulations, but he says this is encouraging, but take courage. He used that phrase a lot, Jesus did. But take courage. You'll be all right. Keep praying, keep doing, keep speaking. And I have overcome the world. What do we want more? He's overcome the world. He has given us salvation. He has saved us from our sins. He tells the the. The disciples the truth and they acknowledge the truth they finally finally get it and so and he he disciples them he's not talking in parables here so always remember don't come to Jesus for pain free life that's the wrong motive you come to Jesus and many people witness come to Jesus and all your problems will be solved that is absolutely not true because I just read it in this world, you will have tribulation. Of course, Jesus had the worst tribulation of any man that's ever lived. So God bless you. I hope this encourages you. It should encourage you. It's the truth. It's Jesus telling his disciples that I'm going back to the Father and them realizing it. Light bulb goes off, if you will. You're speaking plainly and we are not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this, we believe that you have come from God. Did you know the word repent is not in the Gospel of John? John was used the word believe as it was synonymous to repentance. Interesting. Study it out. So God bless you and your family. Till next time, do what you can, when you can, where you can, but do something and stay in the, the Word. God will never let you down. Take care and God bless.